Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. And welcome to the Church of St. Andrew and St. Paul here in downtown Montreal. You can check us out on our YouTube channel, our Facebook pages and indeed our website. Our orders of service and other information about different events we are holding in church can be found also on our web page as well as our YouTube channel. We do hope that your time with us will be an enjoyable time, an assuring time, and also a hopeful time this Eastertide. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this day. Some words from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, we seek refuge. Do not let us ever be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver us. You are indeed our rock and our fortress. For your name's sake lead us and guide us. And take us out of the net that is hidden for us. For you are our refuge. And let your face shine upon your servants. And save us in your steadfast love. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Almighty God, throughout this past week, we have heard your voice. We have been touched by love from words spoken and prayers said, and perhaps kindly greetings or welcomes. And we give you thanks for those who care for us, and indeed the blessings that we have received. And we thank you for your church, gathered as we are, virtually and physically distant just now, yet one in spirit, gathered to offer you our prayers and our praise. And today, God, we also thank you for the gift of time. Help us to get used to this gift and to use it wisely for rest, for work, and for you. May we find time for ourselves and indeed those we love, and time for those that we are called to help. Remind us also of the words that we should have spoken in love and not in difference. Remind us of our ministry to help and support those who need hope and strength at this time. And remind us not to waste or squander this gift of time, which is your gift to us. So we would ask you today to forgive us for neglecting love and our ministry and indeed our time. And relying on the compassion of Christ May we all seek a fresh start and a new hope as we begin a new week with you. And we pray the prayer that Jesus teaches all disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Bon dimanche à tous. C'est un plaisir de vous retrouver virtuellement pour notre service du dimanche, et ce, pour une dixième semaine consécutive. Toute l'équipe de l'Église de saint andrew et saint paul est heureuse de vous offrir de plus en plus de contenu vidéo et d'activités de rencontres virtuelles tout au long de la semaine pour briser l'isolement qui nous affecte tous. Je vous invite à consulter le programme du service, disponible en cliquant le lien dans la description sous la vidéo, 
pour avoir toute l'information sur les activités offertes. Des activités pour garder contact les uns avec les autres, pour supporter ceux qui sont dans le besoin et aussi pour développer et approfondir notre foi. Among this week's announcements, I want to draw your attention to the following activities. You are invited to join the sermon discussion group on Monday evenings at 5.30. Also, the ministry committee invites you to a discussion group every Thursdays at 11 a.m. These groups meet via Zoom and we ask that you register by email. All the details are in the order of service. I also want to draw your attention to a special plea from the Mission and Outreach Committee, which reminds us that as we journey together through these difficult times, we must not forget those less fortunate than ourselves in other parts of the world. You can find more information on how to support the work of the Mission and Outreach Committee in the bulletin. The Stephen Ministry, a group of trained Christian caregivers, want you to know that they are here for you, be it a loss, a significant change in your life, or simply feeling the need for someone to accompany you at this challenging time, don't hesitate to reach out to them. It's always a real pleasure to gather here on the YouTube channel every Sunday morning. And I want to remind you that you can view new video content on the ANP YouTube channel throughout the week. Talking about videos, I also want to repeat our call for you at home to create and share your videos, including the possibility to contribute a video for the virtual communion service at the end of the month. Please find all the details in the bulletin and show us how things are going at home. Finally, during these days of physical distancing, it's important to stay connected. This is why the ministry committee invites you this afternoon at 3.30 to come meet with us virtually on Zoom, perhaps over a cup of tea or a glass of wine. That's the perfect time to share our story and have a good laugh as we all continue to keep ourselves happy and healthy. Now let's all sing together our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth.
Notre première lecture est Somme 137, versets 1 à 8. Écoutons la parole de Dieu. Sur les bords des fleuves de Babylone, nous étions assis et nous pleurions en nous souvenant de Sion. Nous avions suspendu nos harpes au sol de, du voisinage. Là, ceux qui nous avaient déportés nous demandaient des chants. Nos oppresseurs nous demandaient de la joie. « Chantez-nous quelques-uns des chants de Sion. »« Comment chanterions-nous les chants de l'Éternel sur une terre étrangère ?»« Si je t'oublie, Jérusalem, que ma main droite m'oublie, que ma langue reste collée à mon palais, si je ne me souviens plus de toi, si je ne place pas Jérusalem au-dessus de toutes mes joies. »« Éternel, souviens-toi des Edomites. » Le jour de la prise de Jérusalem, il disait, « Rasez-la, rasez-la jusqu'aux fondations. »« Toi, ville de Babylone, tu seras dévesté. »« Heureux celui qui te rendra le mal que tu nous as fait. » La parole de Dieu, rendons grâce à Dieu. The second reading today is from the 29th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah, reading verses 1, 4 to 7, and 10 to 14. Listen for the word of God. The prophet Jeremiah sent a letter from Jerusalem to the few surviving elders among the exiles, to the priests and the prophets, and to all the people Nebuchadnezzar had taken to Babylon from Jerusalem. It read, the Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel, proclaims to all the exiles I have carried off from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and settle down, cultivate gardens and eat what they produce, get married and have children, then help your sons find wives and your daughters find husbands, in order that they too may have children. Increase in number there, so that you don't dwindle away. Promote the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because your future depends on its welfare. The Lord proclaims, 
when Babylon's seventy years are up, I will come and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all your heart, you will find me. I will be present for you, declares the Lord, and I will end your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have scattered you, and I will bring you home after your long exile, declares the Lord. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. One of the positive consequences of putting our services online exclusively is that our congregation is growing. We want to express our gratitude to some of you from various parts of the world who have let us know that you're tuning in and finding the services helpful and supportive of your faith. We've heard from people in Australia and Japan and Europe, the UK, across Canada and the US. Thank you so much for supporting our ministry, in particular for donations that you've sent in to help with our ministry here in Montreal. While our Text to Donate program has now finished, there are other ways, of course, in which you can continue to support our ministry by sending us a check through the mail, by e-transferring from one bank to another, by credit card through canadahelps.org, through pre-authorized remittances. And all of these are explained to you if you download the bulletin that you'll see every week during the weekly services. We want to again thank you for uh, the help that you give us. You know, normally on a Sunday when the offering is presented, we do so as we rise and sing the doxology. And that doxology is still relevant to us because we do so because we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us pray. Dear God, as we continue to worship in our separate places, we long to be together, gathered in your house. In our concern over the duration of this pandemic and in our worries about the many and long ramifications of this trying time, we do want to believe in you and believe in Jesus. We pray, therefore, for an outpouring of your spirit to guide us and to show us the way and to remind us of the truth and to grant us abundant life. Dear God, we all have many questions, but few answers. We can feel unsettled and on edge at times by so much change and so little control. And we also need to be honest about our misgivings and our doubts. So we come to you today confident that you will love us to the end. And despite our failings, we share with you all that troubles our hearts. We are troubled by the mounting deaths caused by COVID-19 and by the economic turmoil it has brought across our world. And we are deeply concerned by our inability to be close to the ones that we love when they need us the most. We think of our young children and young people missing out on important milestones in their lives and of those who wonder when they will have something next to eat, those on our streets with no place to find shelter. We have concerns for people wrestling with addiction and those suffering from mental illnesses and of course those languishing in loneliness and despair. 
It seems that we are troubled by pain within and without. The violence inflicted on the innocent, the cruelty perpetrated on the vulnerable, and the scarcity that belies your generosity and abundance. So, Lord, we come to you, aching to be given a place to rest and a space to set our burdens down. We come to you because we believe in you, your grace and your mercy, your compassion and your power. You promise us places of rest. You give us peace and joy, not dependent on our circumstances, but wholly on your unconditional grace. In you we find home. You set us free. Grant us then the courage to name how we feel, to lament what we see, and then turn us toward the people who need us the most. Make us living stones who create buildings of relief, shelters of compassion, and tabernacles of mercy. Lord, we boldly ask to follow you so closely that others will come to you and believe in you through our work and our witness. And may our faithful discipleship ease our troubled hearts and perpetuate the love of the one in whose name we pray, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Well, one of the problems of doing these services from home is that we can't always control all of the things that are happening around us. And unfortunately, today our city has decided to do some construction on a road near us and make our street the detour. So I apologize if you hear some background noise today, especially since it seems that every motorcycle driver in the city has decided that today's the day to dust off the machine and bring it out for a test run. My wife Catherine and I are awake early every day. We always have been. So it was quite normal two or three weeks ago when I woke up one morning and looked at the clock beside my bed and saw that it was 6.11. But what was not normal was that I realized that for the past three days I had woken up at exactly that same time, 6.11. And I thought to myself, I really am living Groundhog Day. Now for those of you who have never seen the movie, Bill Murray plays a weatherman who is sent to Puxatawney, Pennsylvania in order to cover the annual February 2nd Groundhog Day festivities in which Puxatawney Phil, the famous groundhog, is pulled out of his home in order to determine whether he will see his shadow and therefore predict another six weeks of winter. Now, Bill Murray, Murray hates this assignment, uh, which he does every year. He hates the dumb ritual, he hates the town, he hates the town's people, and he can't wait to get back home to Pittsburgh. But the next morning, when he wakes out by some strange quirk, he finds that he's living Groundhog Day all over again and does so every day thereafter. He's destined to repeat that same day and no matter what he does, every morning he's right back where he started, which begins precisely at six o'clock when the clock radio beside his bed goes off and begins playing Sonny and Cher's I've Got You Babe. Well, that morning, I realized that I, and I think many of you, are Bill Murray. That we're living the same day over and over again, and we have been for the past nine weeks. We get up and we do the same things. We dress in the same clothes. We eat the same meals, look at the same walls, have the same conversations, listen to the same depressing news. If we call somebody ask, up and ask what's new, probably what they'll tell us is nothing because there really is nothing new. Those of you who are working in essential services, I expect that you're living your own version of Groundhog Day, going to work, doing the same chores for the same people, returning home exhausted, and then hitting the repeat button to do it all over the next day. If you're not living Groundhog Day, it may be because you're sick or because you're worried about how to pay next month's rent or whether your job will still be there when all of this ends. And I'm not going to diminish your pain or your concern through all of this, but for many of us who are not affected or infected by what's going on, but are merely doing what we're told that we should do, it sure feels that every week is about the same old, same old. Catherine and I recently finished watching the second season of a show called Afterlife on Netflix with Ricky Gervais. Now, if you know Ricky Gervais, you'll know that at times it's crude, it's profane, it's difficult. And so I'm certainly not recommending this for any of you who are going to be offended by that kind of thing. But at the heart of the show is a very poignant depiction of grief. Gervais plays a, a man whose wife had recently died of cancer and he is overwhelmed by his sadness and his loss. He takes that out on other people. He considers suicide as a way of getting rid of his, his pain. He plays home videos over and over of the two of them in happier times in order to keep her memory alive as painful as it might be. 
He tries at times to be kind for others, but they keep dragging him back down and any sense of moving on fails. Well, it occurred to me that maybe what we're experiencing is also grief at times, a sadness for what we've had to leave behind. I think that when I call people and they tell me things are fine, I'm healthy, uh, I have nothing to worry about, that's only part of the truth because there also may be a sadness for what we can't do, that we can't simply go out and do what we used to do, that we can't go to a restaurant, we can't invite friends over for dinner, we can't hug our grandchildren. If you're young, that you can't play with your schoolmates, that you can't simply do the normal routines that were part of your life for so long, that you can't just go into a store and walk through for the sake of it. But I think there's a deeper grief that we may be experiencing as well. Namely, this false trust we had that our society is smart enough, strong enough, healthy enough and rich enough, technological enough that we could conquer whatever misfortune came our way. There's a sadness about losing a sense of security and losing a naivete that thought we really did take care of everyone well. When we've seen the, the gross neglect that is taking place in our long-term health care facilities for the most vulnerable and that those who were charged with taking care of them were shuffled from place to place at minimum wage because no one was willing to pay them full-time hours and therefore benefits. And so those who were supposed to be taking care of the vulnerable themselves ended up being carriers of disease and death as they were moved from facility to facility. When the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem in the year 587 before the Common Era, when they destroyed the city, when they destroyed the temple, when they took the brightest and best away with them in exile back to Babylonia, it felt for them as if the whole world had collapsed. Gone was their sense of security and their naivete, believing that God would always be on their side, would always take care of them, would always protect them from their enemies, would always have one of David's descendants on the throne. And in Babylonia, they grieved. Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and we wept when we remembered Zion. The Bible is full of people who are acquainted with grief as they live, live through those very difficult times. Now, as you know, grief is not something that can be ignored or denied. If we tr try to do so, it comes back in unexpected and often destructive ways. If expressed outwards, it can come as anger. If it's kept in, it can lead to depression. As Don Cruchet, the grief counselor, often says, you can't go around grief, you have to go through it. So what are you grieving today? What are you missing? I'm going to suggest that we take a few minutes, and if you're with somebody else, talk to them about what you're missing most right now. If you're alone, even speak those things out loud. Because when we can name what we're grieving, when we can talk about our sadness and what we're missing, then it becomes real. And when it becomes real, we can deal with it. So I'm going to stop this sermon for a moment to let you speak. And in a few moments, I'll be back.
Jeremiah was one of the most vocal critics of the political regime in Jerusalem. He exposed its sin and its evil, and he predicted its demise. But once Jerusalem had fallen, he had a very different message, in particular for the exiles who had felt their false sense of security pulled out from under their feet. This is the message that he sent to them. Build houses and settle down. Cultivate gardens and eat what they produce. Get married and have children. Promote the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because your future depends on its welfare. He was saying, yes, grieve for what you've lost. But then it's time to move on. So settle down, make friends with this time, which is the new normal that you're going to be living, but it too will come to an end. He continued, when Babylon's 70 years are up, I will come and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place, meaning Jerusalem. When you call me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, you will find me. I will be present for you, declares the Lord, and I will end your captivity. So those days would also come to an end, but in the meantime, the message was settle down. And one of the great discoveries that the people made was that God was not just in Jerusalem, but God was also in Babylon. I think we began this period with a sense of stoic resolve. Yes, we can do this. Yes, we can live in our houses with a few minor inconveniences. But then as time has dragged on, and we see especially here in Montreal that things are not changing very quickly, we realize that we're going to live with some of these restrictions for a long time. And that brings a new level of sadness along with it. So if we're waiting for that new normal to come, we need to know that this is the new normal. This is the reality that we're going to have to live with. And that means that this is the place where God is residing. This is the time when God is living. And so, yes, we need to be sad for that which we can no longer do. But perhaps it's also time to settle in, to plant gardens, to build houses, to have children. And those are symbols of life, of life that comes from trusting in the promise that there is eventually going to be a different kind of a future. These are signs of the resurrection which are happening right now. When Bill Murray began his endless days of Groundhog Day. He pushed back against them. He was mean. He was resentful. He was reckless. He did outrageous things because he knew there were no consequences. The next day he'd start all over again. But then as time went on, he began to reconcile himself to what was taking place. And he turned to doing acts of kindness. He reached out to help people. He found new ways to bring them joy. And finally, he was able to say, whatever happens tomorrow, whatever happens for the rest of my life, today, I'm happy. He was happy because he'd made friends with that day. He'd realized that he could use it for good. And only then did Groundhog Day come to an end and he could move to a future, a far richer and better future because of what he'd learned. So feel free to grieve. Feel free to be sad for the things that you're missing, some of which are really important to be fully human. And feel free to plant gardens and to build houses, whatever that means for you, to create the pieces of life that are going on and to know that God is with you. Amen.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, both now today and indeed forevermore. Amen.